Hey guys, I'm the 50s kid. This is an E46 BMW. In this video, we're gonna do a complete brake job. Front and back, rotors and paths, we're gonna do everything. So let's get started. These are the tools you're gonna to need to do this job. You need some screwdrivers, large and small. You're going to need a six and a seven millimeter Allen socket. You're also gonna need a 16 millimeter socket. You're gonna need a ratchet. You're gonna need a bar clamp to compress the piston in. You don't have to use this. You could use a small C clamp after you get the caliper off to compress it, or you can just use uh, this large screwdriver and you can stick that in between the caliper and the rotor and you can use that prying action to compress the piston. You need an S hook or some kind of wire or bungee cord or something to suspend the brake caliper so that it doesn't hang by the uh, rubber brake line. You need, um, I like to use a set of these engine brushes to clean out the, the holes where the caliper slide pins go. Um, this is optional though. And then another optional thing is a drill with a, uh, a little metal wire wheel on here. This is great for cleaning off um, rust and, and such on the caliper bracket. And you're going to need dielectric grease which is the same thing as silicone paste. This is for lubricating the brake caliper slide pins. You're gonna need some kind of brake lubricant. I like to use copper anti-seize. You're gonna need a uh, brake parts cleaner, brake clean or uh, carb clean would also work as well. This is for cleaning off the rotors. And then of course you're gonna need some blue paper towels for that as well. So I'm only gonna show you how to do this one side. This is the left side. I'm picking this side because it's got the, the sensor. So I'll show you how to replace that, but get that unplugged for now. I like to use this kind of clamp, bar clamp, to compress the caliper, the piston into the caliper. It's just the easiest way for me. You don't have to do it this way. You can take it all apart and take the, take the caliper off and then press it in with a C-clamp if that's all you have. Some calipers, you can get a big screwdriver in here and, and pry backwards, but I don't know, I never like to do it that way. So just try to go as far as you can there. Probably easier to take that spring out first, now that I think about it. Get our caliper cover, cap covers off back here. It's gonna be a seven millimeter Allen. This one's stuck here. So seven millimeter Allen. I'm gonna take that slide bolt all the way out because I'm gonna lubricate it properly. Yeah, they don't feel like they have any lubrication on them, but I do see corrosion and such. You can get these little S-hook hangers at the 99 cent store. They're real nice to hang the caliper up off of the suspension up here. Let's get that brake pad out of there. I actually have like a lot of brake pad left on these. There's a lot, that's probably like halfway down, but I bought a whole kit um, for, for, you know, I just bought a whole kit anyway, mostly because my rear brakes are still making noise. They've been making noise since I first bought the car like two years ago, they make noise in reverse. And these front ones started to make a little bit of noise recently. So I don't know, I just bought a whole kit. I didn't really care. It was like 150 bucks eBay. So yeah. Let's 
So, our little sensor is clipped in here. That probably came out, that probably goes right here. So, uh, we'll leave it out anyway. I'm trying not to break this plastic cover here. Now these, this sensor connector might be really nasty. It might crumble. I've had these crumble before. Luckily that one did not. So yay, the kit came with a new sensor. You don't really need to change these sensors unless maybe they touch. See, it's got this little nub on it right here. So unless that ends up touching on the pad, the, the back of the pad and wearing down, you don't really need to replace it. But you know, if it comes with it, then hey, why not? Just snaps in to this little bracket back here. And then we'll put it through this and we'll snap that back in where it's supposed to go. Hopefully it'll stay in. I don't know if it will. Seems good. Ooh, this screw is uh, getting bad on me. That is troubling to me. Got to buy new ones. So the brake rotor is going to come covered with um, a, a kind of a thick oil called Cosmoline that is going to prevent it from rusting in the box. So you got to clean it off with carb cleaner or brake cleaner. Something. Some kind of solvent. So do the back and the front. I'll do the front in just a second. Don't want to make that tight at all. It doesn't, it doesn't need to be tight. It just, you know, it just holds the caliper on right there. So I'll leave it loose for myself. The wheel is actually going to hold this thing tight. So not a big deal just leaving it loose for myself so I can replace it. You'll notice when you look at a brake caliper, you'll notice the, the shiny areas. Those are the parts that you actually need to lubricate. And if yours is, you know, if yours are rusty at all, you can use one of these little wire wheels and you can just clean the rust off real quick. And these are, you know, a couple dollars at Harbor Freight, so. It's a really nice way to just restore your caliper. Make sure you don't have any noise. little bit of brake dust on there. And then let me show you cleaning this part, this caliper here. I like to spray a little solvent in there. And then I've got a set of these engine cleaner brushes. And that's just an easy way to clean all the old grease out of there. Grease and dirt and whatnot. 
Uh, but you know, you, you probably don't absolutely have to do that. But it's just something I like to do. So I'm putting brake grease here. It's just anti-seize. Put it along here. And you also want to get the insides right here because those insides are actually going to contact part of the caliper up there. And if you look on the caliper, you'll see where the old ones do that. I'll show you in a second. I'm just going to get these in so they're in there. So on the old caliper, well, on the caliper, right here, this is an area that contacts Usually the front pad, usually the back pad doesn't contact for some reason, it's just the way they make it. But I'm gonna go ahead, get some brake grease on the inside of the piston here, and then up on this inside area that contacts the back of the pad, which usually, usually doesn't need brake grease, but I suppose it depends on your area. I like to put it on there anyway, just in case. Brake grease on these ears right here. Let me put our caliper on. So I don't know if you can see this, but here, let me show you. So you can see up here, that ear really doesn't contact the caliper, but right here it does. So that's why. So I like to use silicone paste to lubricate the brake caliper slide pins. I think we should kind of wipe these off first. I see a hint of old something on them. So silicone paste, AKA dielectric grease, same stuff. Just put a little on there. Um, the reason I like to use this instead of brake grease is because this is um, rubber safe. And petroleum grease is going to eat into rubber and cause it to swell. So it's just my habit to use this. It's probably not absolutely necessary on this particular kind of uh, caliper slide pin. Some of them actually have a little piece of rubber on the inside and they fit inside of a, inside of a um, metal housing. And there in, the, in those cases, if you use grease, that's gonna, that's gonna cause it to really swell. So. Don't forget those little caps. Then we'll route our our new sensor up in there, in where it's uh, in that little cap there. And you just wanna make sure that the sensor faces the pad and not the brake pad, I mean, um, not the piston. So the sensor needs to face this way. Don't forget this little clip. I seem to always forget it. Okay, so now we're done with the fronts. We'll just jump to the backs and then we'll be done. Okay, rears. This time we're doing the right side because that one has the sensor. So that's the uh, tricky part, I suppose. Or not the tricky part, but the important part. Come on. So I went and pumped up my brakes. Make sure to, to definitely pump up your brakes in between each side. If you're gonna compress your piston, well, you have to compress your piston in all the way, but uh, if, if you're gonna do it this way, another way to do it would be to crack the bleeder screw when you compress the piston in. That way you just pump out a little bit of extra fluid, but 
you know, uh, I, I usually don't have trouble doing it this way one, one side at a time, um, unless somebody's gone and, you know, filled the brake cylinder, the brake master cylinder up when the brakes are like halfway, you know, halfway through their life. Cause that is not what you're supposed to do. The whole design is, is the brake fluid goes low when your brakes are worn out. That way, when you compress these in, it should make your brake level rise just to the very top, but not overflow. If it overflows, somebody topped it up. Just make sure we're all the way compressed. It's basically identical to the front, really. Now these ones I happen to know are lubricated with silicone grease already because I did them. I think that was a video that I didn't post a very long time ago which was just on lubing these up with silicone paste. Again, kind of the same amount of wear, but these have been making noise forever and ever and ever in reverse, particularly when it's cold. So, and I'm just, I'm tired of it. Let's see, where do we want to hang this up from? This might be tricky. I'm just gonna hang it like that. Definitely in the way. Okay, I'm gonna do something bad. I'm gonna let it hang for a second, but it's not that heavy. It's actually a no-no. You don't wanna let it hang. gonna be all right for just a second. There. If you don't have an impact driver, um, you wanna take this out first while the brakes are still on. You can put the parking brake on in the case of the rear. And in the case of the fronts, you can stick a screwdriver in through the fin, in through the caliper, or just, just above the caliper so that the brake rotor will stop on the caliper. And that's how you'll be able to take these screws out if you don't have an impact driver. And if that's rusted and crusted on, you just want to hammer on it on either side, either side, it'll eventually break free. If it doesn't come free like that, I mean, it should come free. I mean, your, your brake shoes shouldn't be locked up against the, the, the rotor. It's like a, it's, it's what they call a drum in hat rotor. It's got a little mini brake drum inside of here. And yeah, like I said, your, your, your brake shoes or your parking brake shoes should not be pressed up against it and holding it on too, too tightly. Cause if they are, that's probably be, that probably would have been making a lot of noise, but even still, as you drove around that they would have gotten worn out the, the shoe material would have gotten worn out and it shouldn't be seized up on there anyway. But if it is, you can go ahead and get a, a smaller screwdriver in through this hole. And then you go ahead and back this little adjuster off. I forget which way. Let's see. Yeah. You're probably going to move it that way. This way extends it out. I think we were about there. So you'll want to push this in and lift, lever it up this way so that you're turning the wheel that way. That's gonna make it go in and make the brake shoes collapse. When you go the other way, the opposite way, which is this way, it makes it extend. off the inside of the rotor there. 
on the back side. Should be the right hole right there and i doubt that i have to do any adjustments to it to the parking brake if you wanted to again smaller screwdriver get it lined up use a flashlight to shine through there and adjust it until not until they're dragging until you they're until you can just barely hear them i mean i hear them a little Now, before we do this, before I put this on, let's go ahead and replace this sensor. You might get a better view. Well, I don't think it's gonna matter in the end. So there's just a clip up top here, a little plastic clip holding it up there. Same thing on the inside here. And then it's going down through <clears throat> the first hole on the control arm up here. And then another clip. <laughs> and another clip. Okay, so hopefully you can see where this little box is back here. really hit it on you. Right there. Cool. And these are just the little clips where it goes in, snaps in there. Then it goes up through here. Basically, just follow the other cord. Pretty simple. And through here. Again, just more little clips. There's a little, there are little spaces on the cord where it's supposed to go. Now we can get our brake rotor on. Want to make sure that you don't feel a, a drag on it. Here, I'm gonna let it hang again. I know, bad. It's, it's really light though. Some people put blue Loctite on these bolts. I've never needed to do that. I think it's like a motorcycle thing mostly.
do not put red Loctite on them. I just thought of something. <laughs> make sure you compare your pads, and make sure they match because I've got the 330. They have thicker pads. The 325 has pads that are half this length. That's happened to me before. So make sure of that. Should have made sure of that a long time ago. I think I forgot the outsides here. Got our pad sensor snapped in. Again, make sure that that pad sensor is pointing towards the pad and not towards the caliper or the, the piston. And as always, don't forget the little clip. And finally, the little caps. So that is it for the rear brakes. Of course, I got to do the other side. Um, that is not it though. We have to finish up by bedding these brakes in. So I'm gonna show you how to do that next. Remember to pump your brakes up before you back up. Otherwise, you're not gonna stop. So for proper brake effectiveness, you need to perform a bed-in procedure. This is where you transfer a thin layer of the pad material onto the brake rotor. And you do this by heating them up, getting them really hot. And the way you do that is by performing a series of speed ups and slow downs. Um, we're gonna speed up to about 35 miles an hour. We're gonna brake with moderate force. And then we're gonna repeat that maybe five times. You don't come to a stop in between each time. So you just keep going speed up, slow down, speed up, slow down. And then we're gonna do that again. This time we're gonna go up to 45 miles an hour and we're gonna brake with, you know, hard. We're gonna brake pretty hard. And uh, we'll do that about three, three times or so. And then we'll pull over and let the brakes cool and then we'll be done. So you wanna to try to do this on roads that are clear because you're gonna be starting and stopping a couple of times. So I try to take a route. So we're gonna speed up to about 35 and then slow down, medium pressure. Everything's gonna go flying. We're gonna repeat this a couple of times. Not coming to a complete stop. I see a car up ahead. I'm gonna stop before him. So not coming to a complete stop each time. The idea here is we're heating the pads up, heating the brakes up. I take this little route. Okay, I'm gonna go slow because I want this guy to get out of my way. So we're gonna go fast again. I'm doing this fairly rapidly. 35, slow down. 
not coming to a complete stop. If you come to a complete stop and you're pressing down on the brakes, you're gonna cause an imprint on your pads. Here I'm coming to a stop here. I'm just going to sort of do a California roll through it. Nobody's coming. I'm gonna go again, about 35. Kind of a similar route that I take. If you're coming to, if you have to stop, just use your emergency brake because uh, those are not the pads, those are different. So over here, I'm gonna do 45 here. Fairly rapid stop this time. I'm gonna do a three of these. I can't do another one because I'm coming up on a stop sign too quick. So I'm just gonna roll up to it. Roll through it. Here, I'll try to get on this guy. Fairly rapid stop. And I went the wrong way. Oh, you know what, this is good enough. I'm gonna pull, pull in here. Pull to a stop, not come to a complete stop. I'm gonna use, I'm gonna flip into park. And if you did this right, you should see smoke coming off of your brake pads because you heated everything up properly. So now you just park and let them cool. You can see that smoke. If you smell it, you did it right. So just wait until it stops smoking and then drive home or drive as normal so yeah that one's particularly smoking nice and smoky so it should only take about five minutes for the pads to cool down and then you can just drive normally um, if you learned something please throw me a subscribe i'm on patreon now if you want to support the channel appreciate it i'm the 50s kid thanks a lot for watching